Distinguished colleagues, good afternoon. I hope that our coffee break and lunch uh, gave you some chance to relax. So uh, you had some time to think how the technologies change the whole institution which is called the intellectual legislation and what the future for this institution is, how it's, go it's going to look like and what will happen to the legislation, what will happen to technologies and what instruments the authors and the uh, creative people can use. I guess we have got three important factors or I would say challenges which dominate the institution of the intellectual legislation. First, we have the new forms of objects which are oriented on the quick production. We spoke about 3D models, but now we um, see the emergence of synthetic biology, which uh, lets us produce not only material things, but uh, some tissues and microorganisms of industrial use and that can be described by a figure and it is more and more difficult to uh, use for patenting. The uh, objects of the production uh, come very quickly but we need more time to produce them or to patent them and not anyone have, has got uh, power or wish or time and that certainly relates to the intellectual property uh, legislation and we get more and more products from the internet, from the network. We don't buy material carriers like disks or sub or objects, but we get something from the net and we reproduce it immediately. So uh, if we want to get some object, it's much easier to get from the net and it's much easier uh, to get it, to derive it than to, sell, to make an agreement, to conclude an agreement. And then the objects and the rights on them uh, will get their own life and how we can connect them, how we can legally connect them becomes more and more unclear. And then the whole system of intellectual property, whether we speak about the um, intellectual property rights, the copyright, uh, or the, sub, uh, the document which was signed by Queen Anne, Anne and uh, uh, well, just which gave the rise to this uh, intellectual area. So um, any, anyway, uh, if we want to get the copyright, somebody has to create it and somebody has to patent it, whether uh, individually or in a group of people. And today, if we want to create something new, we have to use big data and a big amount of information accumulated by the humanity. And every new object uh, incorporates all the, the results of the previous work, the open patents, publications, uh, well, some research and so on. And every new uh, creator has got, well, invisible co-creator because it's impossible to be in vacuum. We live in the digital world. And whether it is uh, fair to speak about the individual monopoly and uh, the individual ban when uh, the creation of new objects uh, is going on uh, or happens in uh, the digital network, and these are three uh, challenges which we face in the area of the intellectual property rights. Any technology uh, can both threaten us and uh, support us. Because uh, every, uh, every issue has both sides, uh, has two sides. So the development of technology, when uh, it challenges the intellectual right, can also bring some solution. And I hope that today we have got many speakers and, uh, well, in our talk we can discuss uh, whether the institution of intellectual property rights is threatened uh, by the digital um, economy or just or what kind of challenges it has got within the frameworks of the digital economy. And I would like all the speakers um, not to receive 
restrain their uh, feelings because our uh, track is uh, called realities and futurism, reality and futurism in the sphere of intellectual property. Of course, we would be happy to hear something about futurism, but we certainly have to speak about reality because we have to understand how quickly we can react to different new challenges. And the first issue, which uh, the first question, which I would like to address you uh, is the reality. And I would like to ask uh, Yuri Zubov, uh, who is the director of the Institute, Institute of the Patent, uh, Property Patent of Intellectual Property. Um, so that's the major institution which deals with patenting and with industrial property. So the question is how we react on new uh, objects, new types of objects, because even uh, the uh, quantoriums for children uh, work with uh, some uh, new objects, but uh, that is something that you require when somebody addresses your institute. Uh, just uh, somebody who comes to you is required to produce some object. So I can I cannot to restrict myself. Yes, you can, colleagues. I'd like to welcome everyone. That's true that the challenges which the patient system are is facing today, the institute is facing today, all these things influence are influencing us, uh, make us think in a broader way to see into the future, and they push us to the implementation of quite ambitious projects and try to make us find ambitious solutions. And we've been living in this paradigm for many years, and the movement towards digitalization and development of technologies uh, enables us to look into the future with optimism onto the pictures which, uh, which Sergei Yurovich has mentioned, and three-dimensional models, three-dimensional algorithms is not a distant future. This is a reality uh, we will be living with very soon. But I would like to focus on this point and go into details for Bill. I, uh, I have a presentation, but if we cannot put it on, I can say by myself, colleagues, please get back the clicker. I cannot do this with the uh, force of my mind. Can, can we get the second slide, please, and the third slide, please? We have discussed today that the three-dimensional models for expertise on for 3D objects requires development of technical means, requires the change in legislation, but if we were assured by Ministry of Economic Development and the Skolkov found that they are dealing with this issue and the, by the end of this year they will have a new legislation. In terms of technological developments, uh, by the initiative of the Ministry of Education of Russia last year, we launched a project by St. Petersburg Technical University and the Federal Institute of Intellectual Property, a project in creating a, program, a software which will enable uh, one to work with 3D models and to upload the 3D models which identify their significance to any kind of device, be it a personal computer, any kind of gadget, at, in any place at, of the world. If you have the internet connection, you will be able to download this system of 3D model from the internet which is very much convenient. It is very convenient for engineering centers. You develop and create visual image. Then you do not have to do anything. You just register within the system and then upload this model. The model is processed by logic system using uh, artificial intelligence. It is decomposed into mathematical components. They are compared to each other and then 
immediately the decision is given, the solution is given. The convenience is for everyone. This is not a technical barrier. This is a simplification of technical development and, develop and exchange of information and taking faster and more efficient solutions. I would like to add that as for today, the solutions like these do not exist. That is why we need to create special methods in the field of studying rules of comparison 3D models, quantitative, qualitative indicators, and in the future we will have to carry out some joint research and testing in the 10 engineering centers next year. And, and we hope that the system will appear by the end of this year or next year. As for FIPS, I am taking my words back. This is good news that by the end of this year, everyone who is creating a 3D model, making their project in AutoCAD or in any kind of platform can upload these in the Federal Institute of Industrial Property, then immediately get a, an answer or reply from there if uh, similar models exist, and then com com uh, put this object into operation and in the regime of uh, legal protection. So we start from reality and then we get into the future by the end of this year. I only have one question, Yuri. In our legislation there is such a mysterious phrase similarity to the extent of confusion. This is quite a human notion. Similarity and confusion are always similar, so to say. If such a model gets into FIPS, computer has another vision. How will you teach computer to differentiate between them? In order to do that, we are working on or we, do, we are developing a mathematical model which will be a drive for this. We uh, put there uh, new, neuronic connections which will enable to identify these similarities with mathematical accuracy. So, colleagues, in our plenary sessions we spoke that technology will change something. Now I can tell that the artificial intelligence will identify the similarity of confusion in objects. Now we are talking about industrial uh, samples and on the stage of this piloting, uh, this piloting phase, phase we will be able to get uh, appropriate approaches in using this artificial intelligence. Thank you, colleagues. It, this is inspiring, of course, but there are more complicated models than 3D models which we can print now. We are now talking about virtual worlds, about computer games. We have a lot of objects like this with which in the field of patent law or uh, copyright law have never worked. We have a notion of a piece of music, piece of literature, database, but it's very difficult to say in the appeared uh, artificial reality what it is. What kind of category is that? What kind of strange objects are these? And now I'll like to give the floor to Sergei Davidov, Vice President of Vizar, who is dealing with that. Uh, do you need intellectual or uh, Distinguished colleagues, uh, I would like to continue uh, the topic raised by the previous uh, speaker. Similarity leading to conclusion. On, so my company uh, is uh, the biggest animated cartoon studio, we produce uh, cartoons, uh, full-length cartoons, and similarity uh, almost leading to conclusion is uh, uh, our curse, because it's very difficult to uh, patent uh, copyright, to have a copyright for our cartoons as such, for the soundtrack, pieces of soundtrack, music to animated cartoons. So this is uh, uh, sort of a painful topic for us. So um, I I would like to speak not so much about animation, but about virtual technology. So I'm going to uh, be passionate because I'm going to speak about revolution. 
Uh, so human, uh, the history of humankind, uh, I'm not going to speak about Russian uh, revolution, Russian October revolution, but uh, humankind as such uh, has been going on through several revolutions, uh, last uh, century, industrial revolutions, then uh, sexual revolution, and now we are living in an absolutely amazing era, uh, the era of in technological revolution, and we are witnessing all these changes uh, happening so quickly to all of us. Yesterday, the day before yesterday, Amazon company last year invented 20, in, invested 22 billion US dollars into R&D on uh, new technologies. And this is all, only one company investing into uh, computer technology R&D. And how many are, uh, are there big, how many big companies are there on the market whose priority is R&D in new, uh, technologi uh, new technologies? Uh, for I, myself, uh, uh, separates uh, the history into several several um, stages. First, applied technological revolution, and this is when uh, all companies started uh, um, designing their websites. This is stage one. Then the falling stage uh, arrived. Uh, uh, smartphones um, came into being. Um, thank you for for the presentation. I will be commenting on the slides. Then uh, mobile applications another step, another stage, and mobile applications appeared not only on uh, the screens of our computers, but on our mobile phones as well. And now we are going through stage three. No less important, uh, it's called uh, uh, vir virtual reality. Virtual reality. Augmented or end work virtual reality. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work. Next slide, then. Uh, да, это вот, собственно, анимационная студия, so которую я представляю. И что такое дополнительные very sophisticated um, graphic и, solutions uh, uh, to вот, make this virtual reality seem real to you. So that's where, uh, that's how virtual reality is going to uh, develop. So now we are going further and we're speaking about the use of two um, devices, smartphones. Uh, and uh, virtual glasses. Uh, so I've already mentioned it earlier, uh, I mentioned it early in my presentation, so we are very close to children, children are our customers, that's why we invested our efforts into producing toys, virtual toys, and here they are, stage one, uh, toys, stage two, toys, and of course virtual reality, toys and games that we developed for our uh, customers. So uh, I uh, already said that uh, many, many companies invest into this kind of reality. Google, Facebook, Amazon and other giants of the computer market have been investing into, uh, um, into, uh, into this sector of the market, reaching um, incredible profits uh, uh, as a payoff for uh, incredible uh, invest, uh, investment. So there's so much content uh, on on the market. So it takes three to six months to um, develop an application. And there are thousands and thousands of applications being developed in different countries of the world. How are we going to accumulate them? How are they used? How will they be regulated? How many virtual reality objects are we going to have? These are all open questions because the application of this technology, um, the application and the use, the design of this technology is um, reaching its um, large scale, its full scale in, in Russia. PepsiCo um, has invested into a similar technology and, and we see a boom of this kind of technologies. I'm speaking very fast and I, I'm going to give you a very quick survey of what is happening.
информация, которая будет образование, Техника, then uh, then uh, machine building, Gazprom uh, has, has been using uh, virtual reality in uh, their manufacturing processes and in teaching staff. The Ministry of Emergencies, emergency uh, risk and rescue workers also use uh, virtual reality technologies. Um, then, of course, the banking sector, Sberbank has been using this technology uh, for quite some time, and of course, uh, children. Children who are our customers, as I said, and we use this technology when we uh, um, launch new projects with our colleagues, our partners, and we are interested uh, in creating some added value uh, for our customers on top of a pure technical solutions. So I would like to, I would like to um, uh, intervene if you let me. So here are new objects of virtual reality. They are difficult to classify. Uh, when I was following your presentation and looking at the slides, uh, all these things reminded me of an avatar. Um, and they, they mimic, uh, it's a combination of human presence, uh, human uh, contribution and technology. Yes, so the, the emotion which uh, people project onto the digital world, uh, the mimics, the movements and uh, uh, some other things and 3D, the 3D modeling, all these technologies develop in parallel, develop, develop simultaneously. So it means that such object has many authors, many, many creators. There is somebody who made the model, there is somebody who who uh, made it, uh, produced it, somebody who, uh, well, invested movements into it. Yeah, so just, uh, I think that, well, first question now uh, raises the, the uh, well, the, the largest argument, yeah, because, well, just, uh, it belongs to several people. How do you keep these objects and how do you, um, well, uh, what do you see in that? Yeah, so, yes, uh, we have got several, uh, um, uh, well, um, several opinions, and we uh, now we sell this object to many countries, to 143 uh, well um, uh, buyers. But it's quite expensive, and you know that today, with the technological development, uh, if you want to enter the market, the animation market, the production has become uh, much cheaper. Yeah, so this production has become cheaper and faster, and then. I have got a different question. So the uh, methodology of content generation has changed, uh, so the types of the objects have changed, and so it raises lots of questions on how to uh, evaluate the price, uh, the, the value of the objects, and uh, whether we can infringe the, uh, the rights, and what is the, well, just the Russian legislation and the international conventions, do they support do they help to solve all these challenges? Well, uh, but yeah, probably, um, well, we can get the answer. Yes, so, uh, you know, it, uh, well, now it has become much more simple to produce such uh, models, to produce such objects. Now there are different applications and different things, but by the way, that's also the issue of light, uh, of right, because we are used to having, uh, well, the copyright and the related rights, but now we have got so many uh, components to the production and we have got so many people uh, who are involved into the production. So then it means that we have some new ways and new strategies and how to classify the rights of all, everybody who is involved into that. Yekaterina Filatova, uh, the head of the Association of Augmented and Virtual Reality. Um, uh, thank you, Sergei. Um, good afternoon, everybody. 
and thank you for uh, having introduced the uh, topic so correctly. As for the rights protection, I think it's very difficult and complicated because on the objects that already exist and uh, on which we uh, exercise the rights in animation, in uh, commercials and in the industry, so that is the step when we can use the already existing objects and transfer them onto some new uh, application and uh, distribute the rights on some new, uh, well, new objects. But augmented reality has become the new platform for creating content. So it means that you can use technology to show what already exists. But at the same time, this technology enables enables you to, to create something new there. And in fact, it's um, the new, a new format for, uh, for fine arts, for uh, um, education, because in virtual reality, designers even now can uh, draw the, uh, well, the design of the clothes and uh, they can uh, protect the, well, just protect the objects. Because when you wear the helmet of virtual reality, you create some objects and then you give it to, uh, you hand it down to the industry, how can you protect that it belongs to you? That's one question. And then, but in the fine arts, for example, uh, there are some new, oh, there is a new spiral uh, or a new um, new artistic trend when uh, the objects crea are created in the um, sphere of virtual reality. You use the conversion technologies and projections and everyone who is there because of the movement of your body, because of the interactions with some other controllers and sen sensors, uh, you become the creator of your own ob object. And uh, well, these formats uh, are not protected. These modes are not protected by uh, neither Russian nor um, foreign legislation. And uh, if you want to pass over to the protection mode or to protection uh, idea, then you have to understand how it is created because the volume of the created information is huge. But on the other hand, if you want to analyze the objects which are being created now and here, you have to understand that in any can uh, well in many countries at the same time simultaneously, well people create um, applications, music, uh, educational objects, education objects, movies, well, everything uh, or almost everything in new format, then you have to understand this variety and this, well, uh, well, just this immense volume. Uh, well, so uh, you, uh, well, cannot even think of the technical solutions how to process all this information. Uh, but then uh, the market asks us how to protect the uh, new object, but at the same time, how to fix it and how to show it on some digital carrier and uh, then on some digital platform. But this innovation sphere uh, and the, uh, the field of augmented reality values the uh, idea how the technology can be uh, uh, applied in uh, the technological uh, way. And these things are not protected. So the well, the players on the market are not protected here, and that is the the area which can create some uh, well, some new problems, some new uh, new challenge in every part of our life. So well, colleagues, those who are in legislation, uh, the head of the uh, association of uh, augmented and virtual virtual reality says that you face new challenges and you have to understand how to protect uh, the, all that, and uh, if we uh, come to the dry language of um, legislation, so these objects are enumerated in the Article 1325 of our federal law. So, but uh, when the object gets into this list, so they need the approval of many data centers and many institutions. But how to do it technically and how to protect all the objects that 
technically that. from piracy and but from uh, um, uh, well from counterfeiting. Uh, that's a big big issue because the number of the authors of the content is growing, and the challenges in uh, IP uh, rights uh, I, I, in international property rights protection uh, also rise, and so that's the kind of bottleneck for the whole sphere of intellectual uh, property protection. So I would address all these issues to Alexander Prozorov, the general director of RT Lab. So can we rescue something in this life? Colleagues, thank you for giving me the floor. As, uh, you, you asked me to be hotter, uh, so I will uh, spill some oil into this fire. Besides being a director of uh, uh, RT Lab, I am director for technologies in laboratory. Uh, we are doing different, implementing different different programs in medicine and, and technology, etc. So I would like to say a few words about a robot which fights for the rights of the right owner. Uh, within the designing and development of the system, we faced a few serious problems which go far, be, far beyond roboto techniques and high tech. They are the problems of a state. S uh, scale. First, let's take an ordinary laboratory which carries out certain scientific work, uh, specialist work there for certain grants. For example, they have been granted a grant. They started working. They have uh, articles, scientific articles, pay, uh, patents. This is about 20% of the results which are fixed with a lot of effort. The rest 70-80% are not fixed in any way. What to do with this? Are these results the results of intellectual activities? Of course they are. This is the first problem. Uh, in uh, the existing institutions do not fix all that is there. there uh, somebody said, uh, said today that it worked very fast. For example, we applied for a patent in January last year, and still we have not, uh, we don't have any answer. So, this, this is the story, actually. The second problem. Let's imagine we have a robot which generates or automatically generates projects of uh, claims against uh, those who violate the rights. Uh, the uh, capacity of this robot is limited by, for example, uh, one million uh, claims. Where this million claims should be addressed to? to the Court of Justice. In this case, uh, technicians call it a failure of the system, reject in processing. So the Court of Justice will be full of such claims and will stop doing its job. This is the second problem, which I believe is quite serious. The third problem, which is also very serious, is a problem of a public agreement, so to say, which I have already mentioned. Public agreement on running business has some prerequisites. The main of them, a fundamental prerequisite, is the story of the third party. There should be a guaranteeing party. This could be a notary, a bank, an insurance company, some uh, entities which guarantee and take upon their responsibility uh, the deals. If we speak about uh, high frequency deals or small deals, which are very active in e commerce today and will be more widely spread in the Internet of Things. This are, these are million of deals an hour, for example, and it is one-tenth of a cent, for example. In this case, the, uh, the entity of the third person is not a 
and break, but it is something which excludes such uh, deals. And here we have the technology of distributed register, which excludes this problem. Uh, I will run my presentation and you will understand what I'm talking about. So, I have mentioned the three major problems. I haven't noticed that these problems have been discussed widely, but here but they are very serious restrictors. The colleagues, this is a very interesting story. If you find all the violations of rights using technologies, there will be no one who would consider these cases. The cor courts of justice will not be able to do that. They will be over flooded with these uh, uh, cases. The new protector of intellectual rights in the world is a robot, but a judge is also a protector. Exactly. If we make a robot a protector, then we have uh, some similar cases which can be accepted by a robot, and a robot can be vested with functions uh, of the third party. This story is unfortunately, is unfortunately not paid much attention to in the legal field. No one has spoken about this today. Probably that's because all the things we are discussing now are quite new and we don't have practice in this. And uh, legal practice has always been uh, based on certain practice. But here, we have to do something for the legal practice which we have from the di from digital economy. But digital, uh, I should I should mention that digital economy has been existing for quite a long time. We all have been using uh, e, uh, e stores and navigators, etc. The e economy I'm of robots I'm talking about. This is economy of things. Participation of a human being there is very much limited. The human being only uh, sets certain rules within which the economy exists. The human being introduces smart contracts, the results of intellectual activities which are put into the digital environment, and then robots work according to certain programs. Uh, well, this, uh, this is like from an old movie where only robots work and the human being uh, is released of many uh, functions. So here when we speak about cognitive functions, uh, we're not talking about some physical work, we're talking about cognitive functions. We have to be aware that this is a very serious social story because there are a lot of people who do cognitive work and in this case they are not needed anymore. Alexander, thank you very much. You leave us without job. I have now a question to Alexander Semenov, uh, head of the laboratory in its note. Alexander, are you a scientist? Can you tell us if this wonderful future which will leave us without work? Uh, no, no. I'm now I'm asking a, a different Alexander. Alexander Semenov. Alexander, you're a scientist. Now, can you tell us if such a wonderful picture when robots will be working and be working with intellectual uh, property, how far are we from that kind of future? Two years. Thank you very much for this challenging question. I would like to comment on it uh, briefly. So, so any mistake in uh, changing uh, is less, any mistake in the uh, visualization is less than 3%. So, uh, and uh, technologies changes the world for the better. For instance, uh, new neuron-based uh, technologies are used for solving um, a wide array of, of tasks. And in my short presentation, I would like to uh, tell you about the initiative uh, that we're doing in the, together with the IP Chain Association. Uh, and this initiative is called a fight against privacy. 
В области музыки. Uh, in music, идея, there is an idea to create a service, a program or a software where you upload a web uh, uh, um, soundtrack and uh, you can compare it with the other soundtracks um, and check it for for privacy. So, how ambitious is it? So, well, um, how the Shazam is only part of information that we are checking, that we'll be checking the web, uh, this uh, soundtracks for. So we would like to focus more on the melody of the soundtrack, and there are so many professional aspects that I uh, am not probably allowed, I'm not supposed to uh, air or tell you about, but the neuron-based technology will allow us to uh, test uh, this uh, software as a prototype first. It will take maybe six months or so, five to six months, and then um, uh, we will start um, applying it to practice and training staff uh, to, to use it. So this is not uh, any more a futuristic idea. This is uh, our reality by the end of the year. So we'll have virtual guards, we'll have virtual fighters against privacy, so we can relax. Are you sure? Well, it will take some time uh, till we um, manage to manufacture um, its uh, 100%. Uh, and um, thank you very much, Alexander, for your example. And then I have a question to... I, I would like to go back to the topic... Uh, of uh, copyrights, the number of uh, authors grow, number of inventors grow, or has been growing for quite some time, so, and uh, I'm sure there will be more legal actions, more cases taken to court when it comes down to copyright or intellectual property rights. So how about mediators in this uh, process? I would like to uh, ask uh, Amina Akinshina, uh, online patent company, Uh, uh, will there be uh, will there be a demand for this kind of uh, of services, patenting and defending uh, uh, copyrights? So I would like I would like to proceed to some real business and what's going on in the uh, service sphere in terms of intellectual property rights, in uh, how we change the way we provide the services and what changes we can see in the, on the market. So we've talked quite much about the push technology so that the uh, objects of protection are changing and the forms of protection are changing and the object is also changing. So but while the objects are changing and while we are learning to apply uh, some new blockchain technologies or some other new technologies, uh, the entrepreneurs need uh, to get it protected right now, right here. Uh, so they would like to protect their competence, their uh, competitive um, advantage. And so do we change our attitude uh, to uh, in, in, well, following the demands of the market? As the executive director of the digital platform, which helps the producers to protect their soft and to protect their trademark, I can say that yes, we change uh, the way we provide the services and the, ch the market is also changing and the uh, structure of the demand is changing too. So, and how we also change the, uh, uh, the way, the methodology, how we satisfy this demand. So first that's uh, the demand becomes so massive, becomes, uh, has got a massive character and what is the first step that is taken by entrepreneur when he starts up his business, he, he launches the internet site, or he uh, well uh, he uh, well registers in some um, social network and has his own page. Uh, how does he protect the his 
his um, intellectual property, so he can use the domain name or the logo, uh, but it cannot be locked, it cannot be protected with the fence, so it means that he has to exercise some le legal ways of protecting his, uh, well, his name. And there is a great demand for such services because uh, more than 50% uh, of uh, our inter uh, entrepreneurs have got their own sites, uh, while the Western market shows about 100% of um, well, such connection between the internet and the entrepreneurs. But uh, our uh, business people are not very uh, eagerly registering uh, their uh, sites with the or just register with their domain names uh, as the, their trademarks. Uh, uh, well, how can it be explained? Probably first, the entrepreneurs are not very well informed, not very well aware of uh, the ways how they can protect their domain names. And then <coughs> the other factor is that uh, the means, the methodology of protection is not, uh, well, just uh, wor is not very efficient. So, but when we analyzed our national domain, we uh, had very good results <coughs> because our entrepreneurs, when they register their domain, <coughs> can check whether uh, the same um, name has already been registered by somebody else, so they can verify it. And then they also can go to the company which uh, does all the work for them and use the uh, well the services of uh, patent attorney. So and then we have got a number of solutions which can help us track uh, the violations in the net uh, and. Uh, uh, well, just uh, uh, what are the other trends that we can see in the international uh, intellectual uh, property market? First, the globalization trend, the accessibility of registration in many countries, and they can be solved with digital platforms. These digital services which are provided now uh, um, as online per, uh, patent, uh, they uh, are more and more in demand with the entrepreneurs and I will finalize my presentation with the indicator. Um, over three years of um, our existence we have uh, we have covered uh, about 12 percent of uh, small and medium-sized business from all the market so which means that probably these digital uh, platforms which minimize the efforts of um, patent attorneys uh, can can really be more ex more efficient in the future. So uh, the number of violations is growing, but if we if you provide the quality service, the uh, the service market is also growing. Does it mean that it growing it is growing simultaneously, or is it even uh, growing faster than uh, the other the other market? market. Yeah, so that's, uh, well, so I think that this demand is latent and you can, uh, well, that's rather difficult to measure. Uh, so we have to register the trademark. Um, or just when the entrepreneurs come to the, to us, they don't understand how they are going to register their trademark, so they have got only the intention. Thank you. We've, we've talked a lot about the forms of the objects, but uh, it's more important today uh, to understand not only the, um, the amount of property, the volume of property, but to think about the digital uh, economy, how you can measure digital economy and what is the speed, what is the turnover speed of the objects of the digital economy. So how many transactions have been uh, made and uh, just uh, how much uh, does the expert, how much the expert, uh, expert grows. So what is the resource which turns from the resource into project or, or, uh, or into some product? So uh, what how do the objects transfer from the uh, realm of uh, research and development into the real world? How can we overcome, how can we bridge the gap between the um, uh, research and the real object?
uh, presentation, please. I would like to say a few words about the contradictions existing nowadays in the procedures. Next slide, please. The procedures uh, which we use in uh, relation to uh, copyright and real demands of the existing society. So in this slide you can see a printing house of the beginning of the 20th century and a modern uh, printing complex which is a bit larger than a printer. We are using the system of uh, legislative relations uh, which refer to pre previous technological order when there are major com uh, enterprises producing a large amount of goods and, and everything is okay. Uh, so that all because for a big consignment of goods, uh, there were uh, uh, a lot of agreements for that. In digital, in digital society, all the goods are getting individual individualized. For example, we can print books in several copies or have a t-shirt with an imprint. This, this is a, sing, a single uh, good which still requires agreement with the authors or uh, right holders of the content who made it. In digital society, the production of goods is not done by a major brand, by autonomous nano-producer, I would say. These are people who unite for a short period of time to produce a concrete uh, number of goods. And it requires a different approach to uh, uh, so regulation of these relations. The first and major problem is the cost of these relations. Here on this, on you, you can see the procedure of making a contract when the rights are in the United States but they are used in Russia. I will, I'm not going to read this, but uh, there are very few companies or people who can go through all this procedure. There are very few of such uh, contracts and uh, we quite rarely use in uh, foreign intellectual, intellectual rights, and the same happens with the Russian intellectual rights abroad. If if Amer uh, American right holders have agents, uh, power do not have such agents as a rule, agents who could uh, represent our uh, right holders abroad. It leads to the fact that, it results in the fact that a lot of works in intellectual property is not uh, needed. The, and this, uh, uh, and this uh, graph you can see the publishing of new books from Amazon Warehouse by decade, how many of them are published in the United States. You can see, uh, you, uh, you can see the gap when the rights are not expired yet. The first peak these are the books which do not, uh, the book of protection of, uh, the, uh, of which is expired. Then the gap in the expected income uh, is not more, that's why this property is not used. How can, be, how can this be solved, this problem, in modern digital world? The simplest way is standardization of contracts or agreements. When the right holder does not insist on financial component of the contract, for this there are a lot of systems to use somebody's intellectual product for a certain product and it would be legal and would not violate or infringe upon anybody's right. 
in a case when certain fees are needed to be paid, there is an institution of collective management of copyrights, which is not very much effective. It, 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 it is working in musical industry. So we are, we are shifting to the solving of problems. I haven't descri described all the problems. There are some more components of the problems. As we have an international platform in Russia, and we use uh, foreign intellectual properties, and they use ours, this is a logistic problem. Some provisions of contracts or agreements or even some kinds of rights are very difficult to describe in a different language or a foreign language. And the producers who want to, for example, to produce a T-shirt cannot understand all these aspects. And the legal language of making contract is also very much complicated to him because the contracts are written in a legal language which, are, which is not understood by ordinary people and understood only by uh, lawyers. I have already said in the digital society the goods are produced by nano producers. This is, uh, I meant, a group of people who wanted to produce a book or a t shirt in a single uh, copy. Uh, with, uh, a, with some pictures, so, so not very much popular product, but which, which, is to be, which is to be produced. So to go all through the legal uh, aspects is very much complicated. Besides, uh, there is a prob problem of confidence into these relations. Uh, which rights are given to whom? This confidence problem, and now I get to the solution of this problem. The confidence problem has a standard method of uh, solution. This is a blockchain which is working out a consolidated solution, enabling everyone to, earn, to believe in the result achieved. I will, I will omit this site, taxation. So, uh, the only can, uh, we only can be said the automated system of uh, making contracts. In this case, what is needed? We need a certain register of intellectual property. This is a register which is to be trusted by the people. It is on the blockchain, so for people to, to be confident that these rights really exist. And something like a kind of intellectual property IP stock exchange. If someone makes a picture, draws a picture or publishes a book and makes this product available, and then the producer deals only with the stock exchange. The stock exchange certifies this product. Uh, and, and the exchange guarantees that this uh, are certain rights and the producer deals only with one object but does not make any contracts. It is clear that the existing legislation requires making paper documents, paper contracts, but with the intellect, with the uh, uh, electronic signature, it can be achieved. Alec, as I understand, if we get away from uh, electronic signature and get to some certification, everything will be okay. Yeah, uh, yes, probably even to make a system with the electronic signature and then we can achieve or reach the future. Yes, we have to sensibly make the system of registration uh, for the users uh, to avoid all the problems that they face. And the producer could use this stock exchange. Thank you. Lawyers have now a chance to survive in these conditions. This is, a, this is good news. 
Graal, да, so вот everybody, every day, everybody has been looking for the holy grail, but uh, I'm sure that blockchain chain is such a, a holy grail because it brings trust, it, it brings respect, it, bring, it brings automation. And I think uh, that this is, this is correct because uh, technologies uh, actually challenge, challenge the in intellectual law and the uh, solution is in technologies themselves. So I would like to ask a question to исполнительному директору Valet. Он как раз про блокчейн это наверняка и скажет. I would like to ask this question to the executive director of Pocket Lotion. My name is Pocket Lotion. Добрый день, меня зовут Pocket Lotion. И большое спасибо за предоставленную возможность выступить сегодня. Если возможно, я бы хотел попросить сейчас загрузить мою презентацию. Самый главный вопрос – это действительно спасение? Most important question is, is it a solution, technologies? Is it a solution? Главный вопрос – это действительно… Is it really a solution, technologies? Is it a solution? Yes, uh, blockchain is uh, yeah, um, a very uh, blockchain new technology, but it actually brings a lot of solutions in a lot of challenges which uh, you guys have actually discussed today. Um, uh, as uh, what, what we are going to discuss today is blockchain-based solutions for intellectual property management. These, um, uh, so the, the, the first part that we would like to discuss is um, if I can get my presentation up. Коллеги, презентацию, если можно, чтобы мы уже убедились не только с голосом. Would like to to have your presentation, please. Ah, there we go. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? Следующий слайд. Ah, okay, perfect. Ah, great. Okay, so uh, how can intellectual property be managed within the blockchain? So firstly, I'm just going to discuss a few things about um, uh, IP, which is stored within the blockchain. Um, so it is stored within nodes, and nodes is actually a... It's a um, it's a network of decentralized servers which actually allows you to um, store data all over the world and IP. And um, the, the data uh, and transactions are processed by hashing. So hashing is the mathematical verification and proof of processing data or transactions. So um, data can be verified within the blockchain and this verification can actually be done through smart contracts, smart IP rights, uh, server-managed uh, verification and manual or personal verification. Tracking distributed IP as well as merchandise. Now, what this actually means is that blockchain records the entire history of any transaction or IP which is um, uh, placed within the, the blockchain. So any data flow from the date that it has been uh, implemented within the nodes and has been hashed it will actually have a recording. So whether you have um, uh, data of ownership or whether you have uh, shipments and merchandise production, it will actually be um, recorded. Also, IP will be recorded within the blockchain itself. So the next part that we have is uh, um, all data is publicly available but can be anonymized. So a lot of people are worried about anonymization in uh, blockchain. And um, there are two ways in which you can anonymize, that is uh, pseudo-anonymization. Uh, that is actually putting private key encryption inside of the blockchain. And the second part is tokenization, which is you can take only a certain part of the data which you've uploaded in blockchain, um, and you can actually tokenize it, which then actually um, uh, uh, protects your data and can put it into an anonymized manner. These all comply to the modern standards that can be utilized within the GDPR um, in Europe and in many other places with your right to be forgotten. 
So apart from that, we have some use cases, evidence of use of IP rights. Um, this is... This is, uh, we have a decentralized ledger technology that shows who owns what uh, ownership of data and um, it can proceed payments to authors. Um, we have proof of use, which is in case of authenticity re required, an, authent um, an action is called upon such as verification, recognition, dispute, cancellation, or proceedings. And lastly, brand trademarks and patents um, so there can be uh, protection with notification within the blockchain for uh, goodwill and usage rights so if people are uh, utilizing your brand or your trademarks or your patents you the author or the owner or the creator can be notified of this instantaneously whether and also it will be able to pull whether they have the rights to use it or not if they do not have the rights to use it, a legal, a legal um, call to action can be taken against it. Then we have um, evidence of creator and owner. So that is proof of creation, which uh, is... Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, it is who owns or is the creator of the IP. And we have um, protection against unlawful usage is blockchain provides the notification and recording of where the IP was utilized and whether the user has rights to use it. Then you have... Uh, or, uh -huh. По большому счету, конечно, технология вдохновляет. Yes, that is correct. Uh, it's uh, a lot of being uh, checked, uh, and, and it's being verified, and it's being it's um, it's actually changing a lot of how you utilize uh, data and how you utilize use of IP use of. Um, uh, uh, any any media, whether it is video or multiple authors which are involved within it, blockchain smart contracts can actually allow you to um, have multiple usage rights to this. It can also allow multiple authors to be involved within one section. So whether it's a movie or whether it is some animation or something that has been created, this can actually then state who's the owner, who's utilized it, where they've utilized it, because it is actually online, available permanently. Спасибо большое. Безусловно, это в какой-то степени отвечает на Certainly that answers the challenge that there is a number of authors or co-authors who use the information provided by everyone uh, or provided by uh, the other team. So, and they all participate in creating the intellectual product. So then the potential of blockchain in um, intellectual property is much uh, higher uh, than we can expect it. And I would like to address my question to the member of uh, Blockchain Association Eurasia. Probably he has got something to add. Да, если можно презентацию. Собственно, вопрос, вопрос, на который хотел. The question which I would like you to answer is: действительно ли it is true that blockchain can solve the вопрос, на который хотелось бы услышать ответ: действительно ли блокчейн решает все проблемы? If the blockchain can solve all the key issues of cooperation between the authors, quick contracting, checking the well, the piracy checking, and so on. So your your opinion on that? Yeah. 
Да, я согласна с вами, и я согласна, что блокчейн может быть решением того, о чем вы спрашиваете. И я хотела бы здесь поговорить о своей компании. О компании. А, к сожалению, я никак не могу увидеть свою презентацию. Итак, Но, э, можно ли увидеть презентацию? А можно, да, да, коллеги, можно поставить презентацию? So can we have the presentation on the screen so that we can see this few slides, a few slides to see, uh, well, just the idea of the presentation? So they say that there is no presentation there. So let's move on a little bit and then we will get back to the same issue. Thank you so much. But uh, probably the question that we are discussing now and we have to discuss now is that blockchain is the notary uh, thing, but if we get back to the analysis of the object, the, um, well, the similarity to the degree of confusion uh, and how the intellectual products can identify, can distinguish between them. So we can speak about the um, artificial intelligence and uh, because it is the uh, next technology close to the blockchain and uh, my question is addressed to Zaychenko and Nikolai. Uh, so where these technologies are and are these technologies available and are we ready to apply them? Uh, the artificial intelligence is a very general notion and as a phenomenon and it has existed since the middle of the 20th century and it's not a novelty. Uh, so, but uh, the new thing is creating some projects, uh, products on the background of artificial intelligence and we see many aspects uh, for the uh, legislation and education. And here we can see the challenge, the legal challenge, uh, that uh, if you want to uh, teach the machine or, or a network or any other system of artificial intelligence, you need data. And the al algorithm or the architecture of the network is one thing, but the data set uh, that you teach your machine on is the, uh, well, the, is a different thing. And uh, today the developers have very limited access to the data on which they can teach their machines. And if you... Uh, if, if you consider the advanced uh, advanced uh, sphere as computing and the recognition of emotions and conditions of a person on the facial expression, then you can see that machines uh, can make mistakes uh, only in three percent of all the cases when they identify uh, when they identify some data. But when they identify the uh, facial expressions and emotions, the machines can get uh, can make can be mistaken in 40% of cases. So it means that you have to have very structured database and all the advanced systems of artificial intelligence uh, work on uh, the, a single database which uh, uh, can, contains the uh, recordings of 10 uh, artists or 10 actors who uh, produce, who, who perform six emotions. So it's a very limited set of um, uh, data. So uh, the question was if we can borrow a video from YouTube or from the network um, or from Larry King, the, an American uh, journalist uh, who, for example, interviews um, uh, Mr. President or who interviews uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, and at the same time, Vladimir Putin shows some emotion. So can we break it into different uh, smaller segments of emotion? Uh, emotions to teach the machines on the background of this selection. So, but, <clears throat> so then uh, it means that you have to provide a very serious, uh, very serious database. And, uh, but at the same time, it turns out that the rules of uh, processing in video information, video content on all the major hostings, whether it is YouTube or Amazon or any other service, so these rules um, prohibit um, uh, well adding some technological platforms to analyze their computer database and to produce some load on their uh, te technological system. So it is technologically, it is 
legally uh, prohibited to uh, borrow to borrow the video and break it into segments uh, to analyze the emotions. But of course, nobody will trace you and nobody will never know you um, if you can borrow it. But well, well, no, I can uh, interfere with that because in the plenary session we uh, we uh, mentioned that some uh, video content must be borrowed from the net so that we can provide some educational video. So you remember that? Yes, there is such a loophole. You can create a non-commercial project like a student project and uh, uh, give them 40,000 videos from YouTube and ask the students to analyze uh, well, just the episodes where people laugh or where people are sad. Yeah, so they will come up with some solution and then you can commercialize it. Yeah, so there was such a loophole and it has already been used. Yeah, so, but it shows us that we move uh, to the point when we won't have a, a single uh, intellectual property right uh, for whatever, but we will have some separate um, separate uh, con concepts of intellectual property rights for the uh, industry, for the entrepreneurs, and for some smaller educational projects. Yeah, so uh, it means that uh, well, there will be many users uh, who will use uh, the well just the content uh, as uh, as they wish, and so if and smaller transactions, some well everyday transactions like blockchain or uh, well some trade uh, tradings. So just if they want to sell some bits, yeah, so or if they want to buy some bit, they can do or they cannot do that because this bit costs about fifteen thousand rubles and just people don't simply know how to pay the money. So which means that there will be uh, well a net of uh, well very small traders uh, who will sell some small things and they will not be regulated by intellectual pro uh, protection intellectual pro protection legislation so and then uh, that will be a new issue so but that depends on how you treat the whole issue yes but in Russia we have got some other scenarios not blockchain scenario but some other scenario which means that it, all these cases can fall into that scenario so it sounds very optimistic but at the same time uh, instead of artificial intelligence, we have got some novice intelligence or some uh, probably amateur intelligence, and that's a new idea. But we uh, now we speak about the intellectual property or the property which has been created due to some intellectual activity of the people. But uh, so when it comes to robots, I would like to ask Andrei Zavorin what he thinks on this issue. Don't don't you think that we have taken a human out of uh, his traditional net, uh, his uh, well, IT property rights, and start speaking about some artificial things? Try to make efforts to do that. In my paradigm, Reboot is not something which will win over us, but this is a system of relations uh, which we are getting into relation which, haven't, which hasn't existed for 5,000 years. There is no antagonism at all, and I'd like uh, to join my colleagues to say that AI is now uh, not a, uh, is not a, a proper name. The second slide, please. So I invest into these projects, and these projects are connected with neuro networks, with artificial intelligence and machine training or teaching. And what have we faced for today? What is important going on today? I'd like to draw attention to. We have faced with the great development of open resources. And this uh, platforms with open code enables uh, enable us to do a lot of products both in IT and 
non-IT, uh, which can be patented. Trend, this trend has become very strong in the last years, and we are doing uh, innovative things. We are working with uh, uh, some uh, scientific uh, technology, uh, uh, and uh, uh, in two uh, years, uh, uh, I uh, uh, have seen this uh, 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 technology uh, uh, in two uh, years. I have seen this increase in this technology, which we haven't seen. You know, the sharing economy is in trend now. It really boosted IT economy. Uh, because to use it is very cheap and everything is based on that. The model of uh, uh, storing big data has changed. The companies such as Google, Amazon open their uh, libraries, open their resources and say everyone to use these resources and people or different companies do that. They form this data set, actually they said, use our uh, information uh, and, it's, and it's nonsense when we use them but not work on them. Actually, now we have a model RAS in robotics. Uh, robotization is a very strong hype, but renting robots is the only model which can boost this industry. No one can own this. But everyone wants to use this. So it has been said a lot of bl about blockchain, so I'm not going to comment on this. And the systems based on the artificial intelligence have greatly changed the labor market. Yandex Telok is a is it a labor market or what it is? What kind of labor relations relationships do we have there? We spoke about legislating of freelancers uh, or taxis. Uh, uh, so in 1991 was the law on labor which in, 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 in force today. And according to this law, we have to uh, establish our relationships with freelancers and IT experts. And a very terrible thing uh, which we haven't touched upon, robots are are they subjects or objects of the law? When they act, they are subjects of the law. And this is nonsense because uh, it doesn't exist. And there is a very big legislative gap in all, uh, all around the world. And it will restrict development of these industries very much. We are doing reality unhuman or making reality unhuman. We have boats. This is a programmed uh, algorithm. Uh, this is the system of relationship between a human to system, human to system system. Robotization is actually creation of such boats. Uh, we created a system of voice uh, software. So voice is another interface. We have created a system which uh, creates these uh, voice interface. Artificial intelligence is a robot which is capable to uh, make decisions basing not on the commands but on the uh, estimation of situation. So we are staying at the level of robots. And if someone says that they will win over us, but they are speaking not about intelligence, but they're speaking about artificial intelligence. But there are such things as free will, free choice, and the ability to create uh, your own communication. Neither of these is implemented now, nowadays. Actually, what, what, is, what, is, what, what do we have now? The most precious thing nowadays is not the algorithm, not the software, but big data and the ways of their interpretation. Uh, the, the center of uh, intellectual property ownership, ownership is shifting. The role of human being is changed. The role of labor has also changed. We have to reflect this in our legislation. Probably 25 years later, uh, we can do this. 
роботами The intellectual property sphere will be served, uh, will be served by uh, hardware, but, uh, but will remain the realm of human beings. Of course, the human being will participate in that, and we can get of the human being, uh, at least, uh, in the coming years. But there is another terrible story. We are talking about the level of doubling uh, the information flow. There is a theory of about doubling uh, flow of information. If now the speed of the rate of doubling information is one year or two years, in 2020 it will be about three months. Are we capable of processing such amount of information nowadays? Uh, let hardware use this selfies. We will draw pictures. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrei. I have a question to a person who is, unlike other, uh, many other speakers here, is an inventor. I would like to ask Victor Shapiro if the function of creation can really shift to the hardware or the human being will dominate. Uh, thank you for your question. So yes, I'm an inventor, but I perform, uh, I'm in two minds. First, I, I was planning to um, tell you as, uh, about two inventions of mine that I have in my presentation, and then I was planning to comment on the problems that my inventions brought into this world. But uh, having followed uh, the presentation on artificial intelligence, I am very tempted to start speaking about AE. Well, very briefly, since about my two inventions. So the first one is a space, uh, space um, technology um, uh, dog. So you, uh, this is a metaphorical name because uh, this is a walking stick for blind people. And there is, uh, there is a GPS receiver uh, and uh, a blind person, a visually challenged 
challenged person pushes this walking stick and uh, GPS signal sends a signal to, to um, uh, the person. So it was patented. And then I would like to show you the next slide. And here you can see uh, a prototype uh, of uh, this walking stick. Uh, and I figured out that there is a uh, one drawback. It's not exact. Uh, when it receives, uh, it receives the signal, GPS signal, uh, it has to uh, stay en route. Uh, and the uh, next one, this is a manufactured, a manufactured prototype with a wheel and a GPS receiver. And uh, it's not, uh, uh, it, it cannot receive the signal um, to, uh, to a T. So the following one is a patent for a washing machine. So I want you to see how it works. Стиральную машину с гравитационной загрузкой. Машина содержит три барабана: загрузочный, стиральный и приемный. Загрузочные и приемные барабаны разделены. Каждая ячейка предназначена для определенного типа белья: шел, хлопок, шерсть. Режимы стирки белья из каждой ячейки установлены заранее с помощью джойстика и дисплея. Загрузка белья в стиральную машину и сортировка его по ячейкам по видам стирки происходит одновременно в процессе его накопления. Форма стиральной машины продиктована ее конструкцией, содержащей три вращающихся барабана. Когда все ячейки заполнены бельем, можно начинать стирку. Пользователь за время стирки всего объема белья должен выполнить одну операцию – нажать кнопку «Старт». Загрузочный барабан вращается и занимает позицию выгрузки. Открываются заслонки загрузочного барабана и стирального барабана, и белье под действием силы гравитации из ячейки перемещается в стиральный барабан. Стиральный барабан включается и по программе соответствующей данной ячейки начинается процесс стирки. So I apologize. We cannot spend so much time on this video. It's clear. It's clear how it works. So this is how the actual process of washing is done. So this is a robot, a washing machine robot. You can switch it on for the night, and then when you get up in the morning, you will have clean and dry clothes. So all my inventions. Изобретателю трудно реализовать and sell it. My washing machine uh, uh, was examined by a, uh, an American company, a uh, world leader uh, in the production of washing machines, and asked me to demonstrate for the, uh, for the permit to demonstrate it at one of the exhibitions. So uh, you see, the real problem for any inventor uh, is to sell an invention, uh, his or her invention. Uh, patenting is good, but inventors need assistance in commercializing their inven inventions. Now we have all the necessary prerequisites in place for commercializing any investors, new forms of objects, uh, patenting, and so on and so forth. So as I understood you, the most important thing um, is uh, to commercialize invest in inventors, inventions. And now I would like to give the floor to another speaker, uh, Mr. Yamaguchi, Keo Yamaguchi, head of the International Department of the Japanese Society for Rights of Authors, Composers and Publishers. So what do you think of intellectual, of, uh, how, what do, how do you see uh, the role of artificial intelligence and uh, artificial intelligence and um, uh, intellectual property, copyrights? 
Um, hello, uh, my name is Kei Yamaguchi. Uh, I'm chief of uh, international strategy at the Jazz Rec, which is a Japanese um, music copyright administration organization. We are sister organizations with RAL in uh, Russia. Um, art artificial intelligence in composition of music. Uh, this is something that we are just now starting to discuss, but personally I loathe or I don't want to see the day that artificial intelligence starts creating cookie-cutter type hits. Um, in music, there's an element of surprise, a feeling in your gut, your heart, and your mind that you want. And, of course, if artificial intelligence is capable of producing such music, then I'm all for it. But uh, until we see that day, I don't want to see artificial intelligence creating a lot of music. Um, in terms of ownership, there is uh, still some debate that needs to be done. It's the same as um, self-driving cars. When an accident happens, who's responsible? Um, if artificial intelligence creates a piece of music, who is going to verify whether or not it's the person that made it or it's the AI that made it? And, um, of course, there are also varying degrees of involvement of the AI and the creation of the music, so uh, it is a very difficult uh, debate that will uh, begin in Japan and all over the world. Thank you very much, but I think it is quite logical and we yesterday automatized the production of uh, car wheels and we proceeded from the manual labor to the um, assembly uh, belt, assembly line, and so I think that we can see very soon uh, some other transformations, uh, not, uh, well, in many spheres of life, and we are moving uh, to finalizing our pre presentations or our session, but we, uh, I think we can get back to a blockchain for a little while, and we have got another presentation on cinema and movies. Hello, everyone, and um, thank you so much, Sergey. Um, 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 my name is Sinem, and uh, um, I'm here to zavut, talk about uh, uh, my company, Dospool Stack. Uh, I'm the partner and the legal advisor of this company. company Blockchain Eurasia Association. Well, it's coming. I'm it, going to say that we has yeah, become the first and only blockchain company managed to produce most legitimized uh, company proofs on Androids, uh, iOS, and web applications by combining blockchain protocols Android like Bitcoins and Ethereum and qualified timestamp authorization in a single world, in a single platform in the world. So people are creating amazing stuff in the world, but they have no. How can they protect the internationally and actually I need to mention that uh, formally we are proof stack but before we are using a uh, copy robot so but we change it because of the our unique nature in the current usage areas and differentiation uh, in the future to be added we decided to continue with the proof stack uh, so there is there is no central system to create and use the same legal proof for all countries. So as you can see that for using, the, uh, for using um, how to say that, uh, local proofs for, uh, for each country is cost you time and it costs you a lot. But by creating with the proof stack, because the proof stack is an application that you can use in like 60 minutes, in 60 seconds, you can, you can uh, legally uh, create a legal document, uh, it costs you a less and it's your save your time. So the solution is creating the right proof at the right time, at the right location is proof stack is provide multi local proofs with qualified timestamp and the global proofs with the blockchain timestamp. So let's see how proof stack and copy robot works. People around the world create some amazing stuff. And then they share their copyrighted work with thousands of other people. But how can you protect your work internationally? 
As laws and regulations differ from country to country, international copyright law does not exist. This gives way to an increased infringement rate as creators face huge challenges while practicing legal actions in other countries. And using local proofs in foreign courts takes some time and costs a lot of money. Introducing CopyRobo, world's first company that uses both blockchain and qualified timestamps to provide local and global legal proofs. Various countries have started approving the use of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. That eliminates the need of third-party involvement. Whereas with the new EU regulation in place, EU qualified timestamp proof is illegally binding and is recognized in 28 European countries. With Copy Robo apps, create private or public proof for your file and secure your rights in just seconds. For a private proof, simply select your file location, pick a timestamp and click on the preferred location to store your proof. Your private proof and private link is ready for your protection. A combination of a timestamped digital file hash value, and a unique URL. Public proof is a timestamp file that includes thousands of hashes that belongs to CopyRobo users, allowing millions of people to use the same legal proofs. So choose the right public proof anytime for your cost, speed, or any other purposes. Reduce infringement and cut down copyright costs with CopyRobo. Keep creating and keep sharing. Okay. As I said before, is copy robo is now changed like proof stack. So I'm going to talk about again. Uh, the copy robo aims to provide all available copyright authorities in the world. So we are the first and only company that works with multiple EU qualified authorities. This is important because your proof will be legally recognized in 28 countries in the EU. Um, also, I would like to talk about stability. Is important for any institution. So no one can guarantee that in, in like five years later you will be best proof or not. So it's, it can be a Bitcoin, a blockchain or European Union qualified timestamp or any others. Maybe there will be no, no more European Union qualified timestamp. Uh, so this is the point is institutions are very big that they cannot take um, and risk using on unstable solutions because of law and regulation, digital currency are different from country to country and from time to time. So copyable and proof stack is used both qualified and blockchain timestamp to create one stable platform. So this is the use case that how you can use when you upload this application. So this is the use case that how you can use when you upload this application. Thank you. And I, uh, I shall add a little bit to your presentation. As far as I know, there were court proceedings, court proceedings, and in Europe, courts took as evidence what this application gives or provides. Is it so? Yes, it's true. I'm very happy that I haven't lied uh, about this. So then I have a question. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Caleb. But now I have a question to Anton Garadetsky. If all this happens here, IP chain starts working here, will we be sufficient with Russian laws? Can we, uh, can we adapt them or apply them to these technologies? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is a very topical question, actually. Uh, if we uh, the part of intellectual issues in, uh, issues in economy is growing, it is growing very quickly. And for us to have a modern, civilized, post-industrial economy, of course, we need to give adequate answers to the challenges we face. And these challenges have been already outlined during the previous uh, presentations. And they, first of all, they are connected uh, that there are new objects appearing constantly, and we have to tackle with them, and we have to decrease the costs of their administration. So the countries which are successful in implementing these tasks will be 
мировой экономики и займут and advance, там, uh, and we'll, we'll and we'll be the leaders, the, leaders, the front runners. Uh, otherwise, they will lag behind. And here we have a question, how can we achieve that? This question can be divided into several parts. The, the, the first part is connected with adequate legislation. And here we have to admit that our legislation is, is adequate to that. Most of the and most of the issues are regulated. They can be solved either using the existing methods or legislative instruments or some amendments can be done very promptly. We now understand that the expert community which exists in Russia understands what uh, problems we have and challenges we have. We have a vision, certain vision, and there is coincidence with the vision of business from business. Uh, there are some tasks. Uh, the law in its nature is very conservative. The law is determined by some historical, cultural, geopolitical uh, aspects, and of course you can, it cannot be changed very quickly. Uh, uh, technology is vice versa very dynamic. Technologies are very mobile nowadays and dynamic nowadays, and if we do not regulate them, technologies will flow abroad, as we say. And here I would like to focus your attention on this. And I would like to say some non-optimistic things, pessimistic things. The main problem of Russia is not connected with the legislative regulation of technologies development, but it's connected with application of law. Because when we speak about the protection, when we get beyond the walls of these halls where we have these wonderful meetings, when we get into the court of courts of land, or when we apply to the police, we understand that we are in absolutely new reality, which is very far away from artificial intelligence or high technologies, and many things do, do not work. And until we make the existing legislative norms work adequately, or until we receive the existing uh, protection, possible protection, we will not be able to speak about further development, because without the solution for basic questions, we will not be able to move forward. Thank you. Anton, thank you very much. On the one hand, I can ag agree, absolutely agree with you with what you have said. And as it is said for a good society, the law is very important. But on the, other, on the other hand, you said that the lawyers are very conservative. We have here Kirill Rodin. It's an important point now. The law should uh, reply or uh, meet the requirements of the society. They, uh, we are not talking about conservatism or not conservatism. They should meet our requirements. Kirill Rodin is a head of... Uh, uh, can, can answer this question if the community society is ready for this. So yes, the society is ready for all the uh, changes. Of course, I could have uh, spoken much longer, but I'm given only three to four, four minutes. My presentation is quite long, so I will be speaking really fast, touching upon the main points. But uh, I'm sure you will be able to uh, read my presentation because we've already uploaded it uh, to the website of our Conference, conference. So I will touch upon only the main points of it. Uh, so blockchain uh, technology has been tested by uh, our uh, company in all our uh, processes and we are very happy with the results. We uh, did uh, all Russia exit poll uh, survey using this uh, technology and uh, we used only uh, a minor part of uh, to 
потому что достаточно интересным образом using these technologies. Uh, we wanted to understand uh, how the market, how content owners and content users assess the present-day situation in technology and intellectual property rights and uh, what ideas they have of the future. Uh, of course, uh, our reality sets, uh, sets some reference points for our interpretation for it. We understand what the challenges of the technological uh, process uh, are, uh, what opportunities and risks uh, it uh, implies. Uh, you will see that uh, the level of intellectual mind, in my presentation you show, uh, you will see that uh, computer literacy is not uh, very high. Uh, very, uh, not so many people are aware of blockchain platforms so far. Uh, but um, uh, blockchain con uh, uh, con uh, data content owners and content users assess uh, the market in different ways. Uh, some of them uh, assess them as, as in the process of stagnation and others believe that uh, uh, the market, uh, technological market uh, is not develop uh, developing. So it's a cautious optimism. I would say that uh, IT technologies market is, uh, expresses cautious optimism. Uh, in here, uh, in this slide, I, I am going to skip this slide. You can check my presentation online, those of you who are interested in it, but you see that um, the uh, assessment and evaluation of uh, content users uh, and content uh, owners uh, is, di is sometimes different and sometimes uh, uh, approximately the same. Uh, next slide, please, very quickly. Uh, from the point of view of social order, social demand, so this figure tells us a lot because we see uh, some homogeneous opinion of uh, content owners and content users. 80% uh, uh, um, agree uh, with the statement that our IT market uh, is um, looking forward to some serious uh, breakthrough solutions and changes to it. Uh, next slide, please. Да, вот uh, тоже достаточно интересно, тот уровень оценивая к вопросу об уровне информационной информации. Uh, 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 пользователей контента. Content, uh, owners, управление about... интеллектуальной собственности. Ну и нам, соответственно, 3-5 процента вот там ответили, что они да, информированы об этом. Далее, ну, в общем-то, мы получили там декларативный ответ из серии слышал звон, но не знаю где он. Но слово это было блокчейн мы все слышали, да, но здесь важно понимать, что, что действительно сегодня здесь уровень той дискуссии, которая здесь проходит, это достаточно высокий уровень экспертной дискуссии, но когда мы говорим относительно тех, той среды, в которой мы должны будем осуществлять эти внедрения, да, мы, в общем-то, должны понимать, что уровень информационной грамотности равен приблизительно нулю, да, то есть и за этим, конечно, но ну, это, наверное, к вопросу, в первую очередь, обращенной к органам государственной власти, конечно, когда мы будем предпринимать они, 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 между прочим, ваш опрос тоже входит. Да, да, вот да. Но, но, но там эксперты, с ними были еще и другие там экспертные знает. интервью, да. с ними были там отдельная была аудитория, здесь именно пользуются эти были. Что когда мы будем формировать дорожную карту внедрения тех инноваций высоких, о которых здесь сегодня говорили, мы, конечно, должны понимать в том числе и тот уровень информационно-разъяснительной работы, который параллельно придется проводить в той аудитории, которая касается эти, не побоюсь слова, революционные изменения. Можно далее еще послать следующий да ну там дальше в презентации мы попытались поинтересоваться собственно говоря какими какими стереотипами с точки зрения внедрения сейчас этих технологий живет живет соответствующее профессиональное сообщество и рынок в целом давайте наверное даже дальше 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 действительно мы здесь еще можно дальше да и, даже и лучше следующую даже лучше точку поставить нас уже прям вот торопит. да я сейчас вот последний слайд хотел точку поставить ну ладно давайте не будем искать это а суть в чем, что мы, безусловно, поинтересовались
занимались сообществом и готовностью к внедрению принятия в том числе вот тех платформ, блокчейн-платформ в работе в части охраны прав интеллектуальной собственности и так далее. Потенциально действительно участники рынка высказывают и большую готовность работать с этим материалом. Но когда мы оборачиваемся назад и понимаем, в какой степени они готовы сегодня это сделать, то здесь вот эти наши такие футуристические перспективы, они некоторым образом, как мне кажется, сужаются. Ну, вот, наверное, основные какие-то вехи. Еще раз повторю, что, в принципе, если кому-то интересно более подробным образом ознакомиться с материалом, посмотреть его, можно действительно посмотреть на сайте, вот там должны были уже выложить. Спасибо да, большое, пожалуйста. Кирилл. Ну что, коллеги, мы слышали достаточно много мнений о будущем интеллектуальной собственности, о том, какие вызовы к этой сфере бросают технологии, как можно на них ответить. Я точно зафиксировал целый ряд хороших и плохих новостей для нас. Хорошая новость, что Роспатент переходит на патентование трехмерных моделей в онлайн, но тут же у нас плохая новость, что системы виртуальной реальности рождают такие объекты, которые не то что непонятно, как патентовать и защищать, а вообще как их называть. Найти нарушения можно, можно даже найти автоматически, можно сгенерировать тысячи исков, но тут же есть плохая новость. Направить это в суды и получить решение по этим тысячам автоматически сгенерированных исков как минимум вопрос. Миллиарды сделок возможны, но гаранта финансового страхователя таких сделок нет. Правда, есть спасительный блокчейн. Число сделок в новой экономике точно будет расти, потому что есть нанопроизводители, но транзакционные издержки будут расти тоже, и мы вынуждены отказаться от персонала, который должен это обеспечивать. Может быть, тогда мы действительно двинемся в какой-то масштабный децентрализованный рынок. Искусственный интеллект существует, почти существует, он совсем скоро придет, но датасетов для него нет. Взамен э, искусственный интеллект пьет кровь младенцев и учится на наших ошибках. Видимо, когда-то мы увидим результат этого процесса. Наконец, э, Барьеров нормативного характера, как сказал Антон, в общем не существует, и даже относительно консервативное право не мешает развиваться технологиям в сфере интеллектуальной собственности, но плохая новость, что вопрос не в праве, а в культуре взаимоотношений. Но самое удивительное, что о технологиях, на которые мы рассчитываем, в том числе в сфере развития интеллектуальной собственности, профессионально знают 3% населения, включая органы власти. Правда, есть на фоне этой плохой новости, новость хорошая, верят в успех этого мероприятия более 70%. Вера нас спасет, сфера интеллектуальной собственности точно поменяется под влиянием технологий. Спасибо большое моим коллегам, которые приняли участие в дискуссии, и всем тем, Извините, кто смог пожалуйста. дослушать до конца. А, прошу прощения, можно вопрос? Это я, я здесь. Буквально пару фраз. Во-первых, где можно пообщаться, так сказать, самому бизнесу и высказаться, потому что я вот как раз сейчас его и представляю. То есть я как и изобретатель, да, и в то же самое время продавец. И у меня действительно есть несколько вопросов, которые хотелось бы обсудить, и пока я не понимаю, в каком именно в какой именно тематике, но я здесь услышала именно те э, вопросы, которые как раз-таки меня и очень интересуют. Раз. Если... Ответ на вопрос. Мы завтра найдем окно, сейчас с вами переговорим и поймем, где это лучше обсуждать. А, а что тянуть Давай. до завтра? Давайте сегодня. У нас два часа до спектакля. Два часа до спектакля? Вы знаете, я просто а на самом деле просто сессии. ремарку хотела сделать, буквально пробежаться, если можно. Не, если не, вас это заинтересует... Давайте мы лучше отдельно придумаем тогда, что, что еще возможно. Вдруг здесь обсудить. есть как раз те люди, которые помогут мне потом ответить, подойдут и расскажут что-то. Так, а вы скажите, обозначьте тему, проблему. Вот я о чем и говорю. Значит, смотрите. Нас, нам зал, зал, зал. А, зал вам нужно. Ну хорошо, ладно. Да. Но, но просто жаль, что здесь как раз не было... Э, нет, у, у меня, понимаете, у меня здесь 7 пунктов. Одну Один, самый главный. А самый главный... Э, вот я, мы работаем в области дорожной и аэродромной инфраструктуры строительства, и вот мы готовы использовать все инновации, но мы сталкиваемся с большой бюрократией, которая не позволяет эти инновации внедрять. Сейчас с вами поговорим и придумаем, где это обсудить. Правда. 
Это нужно будет не только, наверное, вот в таком круге, но позвать еще, не знаю, там, Алексея Абрамова, Росстандарт и так далее, про дорожное строительство, это точно. А можно чисто принципиальный вопрос? Да. Я здесь. Да. Ну, я бизнес-демон, я несколько технологий сам инвестировал, в том числе, напомню, что наши пенсии в России высчитываются уже лет 10 с помощью блокчейна, так, на всякий случай. Потому что там рубли оторваны от баллов, которые присваивают любому пенсионеру за выслугу лет в разных. И потом, если он военный, там коэффициент насчитывается, то есть весовые коэффициенты, и делается пенсия. Это на всякий случай. На бирже блокчейн внедрен лет 15 назад. Это депозитарно-клиринговая система. Посмотрите внимательно. Теперь принципиальный вопрос. Вот коллегам, проповедующим блокчейн, вы же понимаете, что это одноранговая структура? И одноранговую структуру применять для всех топологий систем ну, принципиально нельзя. Это давайте, первый вопрос. Давайте. А второй, а как это Convert all the, uh, well, systems, all the, uh, well, all the other systems into this uh, single level technology. So, uh, well, I think that uh, we cannot discuss these issues now because we have to, uh, well, just we, we, we have to go to the place where we will have our coffee break. So thank you so much. And uh, certainly intellectual uh, property will Спасибо всем uh... большое.